Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, we're going to continue to minister some things to you that will help you in these kind of tumultuous financial times that will empower you to be better than you are right now. To that end, we have this free product offer. We'll talk to you about that. It's a, it is absolutely free. We want to give that to you. And on our tactical tips, we're going to talk about something that you can do anywhere in the world, whether they allow weapons or not, that will keep you safe. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on our tactical tip, I want to talk to you about establishing baselines. This is something you need to do that will help you and really can save your life. Everywhere you go, there's a regular degree of activity that takes place. There's a regular way that things sound. Um, if I go into a Starbucks and I do not see a single person in Starbucks, not behind the counter, not anywhere in, there's probably a pretty good possibility it's being robbed or has just been robbed because that, or they just built it, because that just doesn't happen. Uh, the way sounds work, you know, right now, uh, really low-tech assaults, that's a fancy word for run people over with cars, but that's the technical term, low-tech assault, has become really popular. And so one of the things that I do is when I'm out and about, I, I listen to what does things normally sound like? If traffic is normally, mm, 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 and all of a sudden I hear, mm -hmm, then I, I, I need to be aware because that violates the baseline. With a baseline, you're establishing what is here that shouldn't be here or what isn't here that should be because this is the way everything looks normal. And this should be true of the way you're at at a gym, the way you're at at school. This is really for everyone. Because this will begin to tell you, there, there's a lot of anomalies that take place that people just blow off. They call it normalcy bias. People, their brain wants to say, oh, this is just normal. It's like the guy at Virginia Tech, when before he killed all those people, he actually chained the door so that nobody could get out. But people saw it, and they were like, well, that's, you know, I'm sure there's a reason for it. But if you had established a baseline, I'm here through here every day. These doors are never chained. There's, I'm going to ask somebody about this this violates the baseline. So, set your baseline in everything that you do. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. We're in the middle of financial week here on Fight to Win, and I, if you've missed any part, I spent the first three days talking about the biblical basis of tithing in the New Testament, completely devoid of the law. And I actually talked to you about the proper way to tithe, how to get the most out of your tithing. And if you miss that, you need to do it because a lot of times people are confused that tithing, they think tithing is just writing 10%. And actually that was just the beginning of it. A lot of it was you lifting your voice to the God, God and honoring God. We saw in Proverbs where it's just wise to honor the Lord with your first fruits of your possessions, with your possessions, with the first fruits of all of your increase. And, and for those of you who are advocating against the tithe, let me just tell you, you're advocating that people be unwise. Because in Proverbs, it was not giving us the instruction on the law. It was giving the instruction on wisdom and the proper way to live wisely. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I'm, there's a lot I'm not going to be able to cover. If you want to increase here in the earth, pursue wisdom. Because you can have money and not have wisdom. But if you actually have true wisdom and conduct yourself the way the Bible says, there will be resources come to it. Wisdom has in its hands riches and honor. But so often people are pursuing money and they're not pursuing wisdom, which is pursuing Jesus, who was made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So you need to do that. That's all free. That's kind of to catch you up. But if you miss that, you need to go to fighttowin.tv. Not only that... 
Um, this is in addition, in addition to the offer that we have this week, Financial Keys. We, wanna, we know that there's been a lot of financial stuff going on in the world. We want to help you with it. And so if you don't have the money, we'll be glad to give this to you. It's, people say, people think sometimes with this free gift that it's not worth anything. This is on Amazon right now for at least 10 bucks. Uh, this is, uh, we mail out, our partners empower us. We mail out um, at least $1,000 or more of product a week and things. And that's the reason tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about partnership. And sometimes people, when they give to a ministry, I don't know where the money's going. Everybody that watches this program should know where the, our money's going because one, it's in the broadcast to help teach you, but then it's also in what we're giving away. We're, we're providing all these things. But anyway, in addition to the free offer, I did teach two messages on tithing that is in from our local church, and we'll send those to you absolutely free. I don't know how we'll send them to you, but we'll be glad to do that. So now I want to I want to shift gears a little bit um, from tithing, and now tomorrow, just plainly, I'll just tell you, uh, I'm we're going to talk about partnerships with ministries, and in particular, I want to talk to you about partnering with this ministry. At least, unless the Lord checks me on it, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and, t t and just simply because it costs money to do what we do. It costs money to be able to look at people and say, um, the partners provide this uh, absolutely free. And you could be a part of that. But I want to talk to you today about being a giver. And this doesn't necessarily have to do with, it does have to do with partnership, but there's a lot more to it. And I want your life to be better and because of that, I want you to become a true giver. And don't turn me off because we're going to talk about a lot of things that have nothing to do with money. But I want to show you some things that will help you. Not only that, listen, and, and get, now giving is anything above the tithe. The tithe, tithe is, a, and again, the tithe is a set amount. It's the tenth, okay? But this is above that. This is you taking out of your resources, taking out of your life, taking out of your time, take, taking out of your focus on you, really, and you begin to become a giver. Now, I want you to see a couple things here. Uh, go with me first to um, first, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter six, and excuse. Me. We're going to talk about what, how God feels about givers. And now I said 1 Corinthians and there I'm at. Okay, we're here in 2 Corinthians and this is what it says. We're going to be in verse 6. It says, but I say this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Um, I, I'm amazed at how often people, they want to, they call it the prosperity gospel, but they're not, they have prosperity that benefits no one. Uh, the same people, they, they believe, everybody, listen, everybody believes in increase. It's just when you start talking about God blessing you that people start getting antsy. I guarantee you at your job, if they come to you tomorrow and say, hey, how'd you like to increase? You're not going to say, oh no, oh no, just keep it, just keep it. If your stocks all of a sudden go up, I don't even know why you have stocks if you don't believe in increase. I think that's absolutely pointless. And stuff. So everybody believes in increase. It's just a matter of how you're going to do it. For me, I would rather rely on the Lord and my focus be on the Lord for my increase than on me focusing, reading my stocks every day and, and browbeating my boss so that I prosper. I'd rather know that my prosperity is not in the hands of anyone else, not in the hands of my boss, not in the hands of the economy, not in the hands of the stock market. And then I, I get these other people who say, uh, well, you shouldn't give to get, which I, I kind of understand that. You shouldn't give to receive. You shouldn't, it, it, you're just giving to receive. Now, here's the, here's, here's the problem, and forgive me for this, and, and I do love you, but you think you're more spiritual than Jesus. Oh, I would never give to get. I, I would never give. That's wrong motivation to give to get. You, you, truly, you think you're more spiritual than God himself. You say, well, that's not true. Yeah, because nearly 100% of the time when God talks about giving, he talks about receiving. Look at this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. 
What are you supposed to get out of that? <laughs> he tells you specifically, if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. Well, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. I, I don't know about you, but if you, you offer me sparing and you offer me bountifully, I'm going to choose bountiful. Jeff, what about you? you? You're in for sparing or in for bountiful? He says bountiful. He mouthed it because he doesn't want to disrupt the sound. But, but here's the thing. What's God, give and it will be given unto you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all of your increase, so that your barns might be filled with plenty and your vats overflow with new wine. You, you think you're more spiritual than God himself? And God says, yes, give, expect to receive. Come on now. Listen, quit being religious and just go ahead. And if God says, when we talk about giving, we need to talk about receiving then yield to him. Now, do I, I, do I think you ought to treat it like it's an investment plan? <laughs> like, oh, well, I've got this guy who says he's going to bless me. And so, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, the only reason I'm giving, I don't care about anything about him or, not, or whatever, but as long as he keeps up these rates of return, I'm going to go for it. If you're treating God that way, you're wrong. But if you're truly honoring God and looking to him as your source of supply, you should lay hold of the increase that comes with it. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, honestly, if God did not multiply me at all, would I still tithe and give? Yes. Why? Well, because He's God and I'm not. And because I am grateful for everything He's done for me. Now, so he says, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Let each one gives as a purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, think about that. Purpose in his heart. Therefore, and, and hear me, I will never be on here trying to coax money out of your pocket. Not, that will never be my motivation. Because it doesn't benefit you to give grudgingly or of necessity. And I just say this because, listen, I, I, maybe tomorrow on Partnership we're going to talk about some things we did in Uganda, but I'm not going to show you a bunch of fat babies with flies and stuff trying to grudgingly steal, get something out of your hand, steal. I apologize. That's, I, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong to motivate people solely by need. I think it's wrong to, to basically con people or show them a pic, you know, it's like one guy says, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Here's the thing. I, I, I don't want to give grudgingly or just of necessity. I, I want to be a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Are you cheerful in your giving? You should be cheerful if you believe you're going to receive off of it. You should be cheerful because you're honoring God with what he's done for you. But there is this important thing about you being a giver. Now, this is specifically talking about finances. Okay? And I know some of you are like, no, this is spiritual. That, that's bull. Okay? The 8th and ninth chapter is all talking about receiving an offering. And that's bull. Because even here, he goes on here and he says, um, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have all sufficiency in all things and have an abundance for every good work. Um, he, he has dispersed abroad. Not, by the way, that you actually qualify. We pray this over you every day in this ministry. You actually qualify in this verse in Curto and Ministries because we do, through Curto and Ministries, we take your giving, we tithe off of it and give offerings off of it. And so we disperse abroad, we give to the poor. So your righteousness will endure forever because we actually do do that for you. Now notice this again, it is financial. Now may who supplies seed to the sower, bread for, the, uh, bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. That's not talking about spiritually. That's talking about material things. He's talking about bread. He's talking about eating. He's talking about you being able to give to every good work. Here's the thing, if you will lay hold of your increase, you will be able to give to every good work. All right, so, um, so, but let's talk about this being a giver because this has been lost on this. This is one of the things we want to help you with 
This, you know, in this book, this, it's kind of interesting. When I wrote this, there's things in here to keep your heart right where finances are concerned. To keep God first. And that's the reason, one of the reasons we want to give this to you. Now, we want to, if you're going to take it for free, I want, you to do, I, want you to, I want you to read it every day. I want you to do what it says. And I want you to read it at least the whole book at least seven times. But the professions in here, the things that you are to say over your finances, I want you to do it every day. But write or contact this ministry for this. Okay? So, let's talk about actually being a giver. God supplies seed to the sower. Are you a giver? Let's, let's look at it a different way. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. It's actually dangerous not to be a giver. Um, we're going to be looking, uh, uh, let's look in verse 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Um, we can, let's look at uh, your checkbook and find out what you where your treasure's going, okay? Um, and listen, I've been there where it wouldn't have been a good report. But you're, look at your checkbook. The more you give, the more you, people say, I want to love God more. Begin to give more because where your treasure goes, there your heart will be also. But then he goes on here and he says this. Now get this. And it's kind of foreign in the, Eng, to the way we hear it as English speakers. But So I'm going to read it out of the Jewish New Testament. Verse 22, it says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That's actually a Hebrew expression. And if a Hebrew had heard that, he doesn't think of like evil eye, like we think of a stink eye or something like that. And I'm going to read it out of the Jewish New Testament. This is where he says, uh, where your wealth is, there your heart will be also. Now listen to this. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if you have a good eye, that is you are generous. Your whole body will be filled full of light. If you have an evil eye, if you are stingy, then your whole body will be filled with darkness. And if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now it goes on here. No one can be a slave to two masters. He will either hate the one hate the first and love the second or scorn the second and be loyal to the first. You cannot be a slave to both God and money. Now, and that's important wisdom. This is talking about being a giver. If you're not a giver, then if you are stingy, you are going to be filled with darkness. Now, this isn't rocket science because how many of you have met people who are so consumed with themselves they don't give. And they're, they're darkness. They're filled with darkness. And I'm not talking about they're going to hell. I'm talking about they're never happy. They're always thinking about what they don't have. They're always miserable. They're never, they, they don't have any joy. You know, um, you know I, I was thinking about this today uh, when we pulled in today. I really like those new Corvettes, and, I, and I'd, I'd really like to have one. And, and so I saw there was one here when we pulled in, and, and there was a sharp looking. I'm talking about the, the ones that look like, a, what is it, an S8, did you say it was? Huh? C8, C8 excuse me, a C8. Um, they're really sharp rides, and, and I'm, I, I believe one day I'll be able to have one. But I'm not consumed by it. I'm, I didn't walk in here today thinking, oh, my God, my life is over. I don't have a C8. I don't have one. And, and I didn't spend all this time thinking about how I could get a C8. Actually, I've sown seeds towards a C8. I, I've actually, but my, my joy is not found in that. My joy is actually found in my giving. And so, but a lot of, I know a lot of people that are stingy, who if they saw that car, they would be so upset. They'd be thinking about, what can I do? Could I get another job? Could I get a side hustle? Could I do this? Could I do that? rather than giving. They're just consumed with themselves. Now, there's a lot more uh, about this than giving. I, wanna, I want you to look at a couple other scriptures. Go with me to Proverbs. And uh, let's see. I want to look at uh, Proverbs 11.24. There is one who scatters yet increases more. Talking about a giver. 
But there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. Now, there's another part I wanna, we're going to read, but I want you to think about this. There's nothing wrong with withholding what is right. You got to pay your bills. You've got to take care of your family. Man cares not for his own family. It's worse than an infidel and is denied the faith. Nothing wrong with withholding something, but you've got to learn to become generous. And then it goes on here. It says, the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. I'm going to read these other scriptures just so that we can jump into this, okay? Because I've got a short period of time and there's some things I want to tell you. And then verse uh, Isaiah 32a, I love this. But a generous man devises generous things. And by generosity he shall stand. See, it's important to be a giver. But let's, let's talk about this, okay? For just a second. Are you a giver? Let's, let's forget about money for just a second. Do you devise generous things? You know, before I got married, I made up my mind that somewhere or another I wanted to bless my wife every day. I wanted to find some way to bless her every day to the point that I actually put a reminder that uh, to remind me every day, how can you bless Terry today? People say, well, that's very mechanical and it's legalistic and it should come from the heart. It was coming from the heart, and I knew I could forget. You ever forgot something that your heart was motivating you to do? My heart was already there. That's the reason I was setting the time aside. But I under, also understand I hadn't been married in a, in, a, in a while, and so I wanted to, I needed a way to, to remember because I wanted to change my behavior pattern because now she's in my life, and I want to be a blessing to her. So I had a reminder. Now today, I don't have to, you don't have to remind me to bless my wife. I, I enjoy blessing my wife. But at first, it started somewhat mechanical, but based upon my heart. But I was devising generous things. Do you? Are you a giver? Do you think about what you can do for other people? I'm talking about separating yourself from darkness. I'm talking about separating yourself from depression. I'm talking about separating yourself from anxiety through becoming a giver. Is it always all about you? Is it always about what you can receive? Is it always about what can be done for you? Do you ever hear of people's needs and immediately think, I want to be a part, I'm going to see if I can help with that. I want to see what I can do with that concern. Or you hear, you, you just, do you listen when somebody says, I like something? You know, I, I remember, uh, you know, Jeff's here. I remember um, uh, Autumn, his wife was, she, she's actually the other side of the, our television team. She actually edit, well, she's responsible for the editing, talks to the TV stations and all that, and with our new media buyer and all that mess. Um, but the kids were there, and one of the kids, his son, made a statement that he was believing God for a lawnmower. And I thought that was, I thought that was really neat. So I want, I, do, I want to be a giver. So guess what? I seek to devise generous things. So I, I think I reached out to Jeff and said, hey, was it okay if I give this to your son? And so I went ahead and, and had this thing shipped to his house. It was a it was a die-cast model of the lawnmower that he said he wanted. He wanted a zero-turn lawnmower. Uh, right now, I'm not in a financial position to actually buy him a full-size one. But do you want to know what? I'm believing God there will be a day that if he ever says, you know, I'd like to have a zero-turn mower, that I could just buy it and have it show up at his house. I want to give like that. Why? Because when you are a giver, you are filled with light. And God loves a cheerful giver. Are you... Listen... Yes, you need to give above your tithes and offerings. And yes, if, if you watch this ministry every day, um, it would be good to give on a monthly basis. But here's the thing. All that aside, what about in a restaurant? Are you thinking about how you can be a blessing to the waitress rather than them being a, wait, a blessing to you or a waiter? Are you thinking about how you can give and how you can be a source of supply to somebody else? Cultivate within you a heart of generosity. What about your spouse? I brought up my spouse, and listen, I'm going to meddle, but when is the last time you purposed in your heart to be a blessing 
even if they did absolutely nothing. People say, well, I was, I was a blessing. They didn't appreciate it. You know, if I'm trying to bless my wife, it's not about her appreciating it. It's about me having a heart to bless. This is not about her thanking me. I'm not a hireling. I came to be a servant. And if she has to pay for her thing, it's not a blessing. You know what, you understand what I mean? If I do something for my wife and she has to say thank you, she has to just gush and talk about how big and how grateful she is and all this stuff, you're making them pay for it. You're not generous. All you're doing is trying to purchase a compliment, purchase something. Don't be that way. You need to purpose, purchase a little bit of purpose in your heart. I'm going to be a giver. When you come back, I'm going to pray that if this isn't you, that your heart, you have a heart change. And if it is you, that you be even greater strengthened in this grace in your life and that you can receive from Him. Come right back. I want to pray with you. Are you tired of your financial miracle never showing up? In this life-transforming devotional, you will discover practical help to see your God-given increase. Order online at fighttowin.tv. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Nearly every day on this broadcast, we give something away for free. The people that empower us to do that are our partners. If you're wondering where the money that you do when you support this ministry goes, it goes into blessing people, either through this broadcast, through free materials, or for us in our countless mission things around the world. Would you consider becoming a partner today? Come to fighttowin.tv and become a partner. Thank you so much. Now we're in this together. If you've been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Kurt Owen Ministries. Visit our website, kurtowen.com, and become a partner today. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the Lord was t- telling them, he, he says, uh, he was talking about the, this, this one group was tremendous givers. And he was telling the Corinthians, see that you abound in this grace also. He was encouraging them to become a giver because it really helps you in every area of your life. And I'm going to believe with you today that this grace abounds in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother and sister sitting there listening. I thank you, Lord, that they will no longer be controlled by money, that they will begin to be generous people by, by dev- and devise generous things. And Lord, as they sow bountifully, they will reap bountifully in every area of their life and that they are able to give to every good work. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me give you a tip, okay? If you want to be a giver, sit down every day and devise generous things to do for others that can do absolutely nothing for you. This is Kurt Owen reminding you that Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much God loves you and give you the ability to walk in victory with Jesus. Special thanks go to the Port St. Lucie Police Athletic League for the use of their facility.